welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really cute and very glittery fake cupcakes. These can be used for photo props, you know, just decoration, all sorts of things. And I believe I mentioned this in the video, but I'm going to say it again here. If you want these to stand upright for any length of time, you need to put something heavy in the bottom of your cupcake liners. I mentioned like those little river rocks that you can get at Dollar Tree. Those work very, very well. And I know in the video, I don't think I put it in mine um, because honestly, I forgot. But I went back while the foam was setting up and I stuck some down in there. So anyway, I wanted to mention it again. So hang on and let me show you how to make them. All right, y'all, let us get started. So first off, what you're going to need, a muffin pan, cupcake pan, whatever you want to call it. You're going to need some cupcake liners. You can get these pans at a lot of different places. The wind is blowing so hard outside and the neighbor's out there with a leaf blower. The ongoing saga of my neighbor and his leaf blower. It's like there's an alarm. When I sit down in my chair to craft, it alerts him and he fires up the, the leaf blower. Oh my goodness. But these pans, you can get them at Walmart. Um, I think I grabbed this one at Dollar General. It was right around four, four fifty, something like that. You're also going to need some cupcake liners. These came from Walmart over, you know, like the aisle up near the front of the store where they have, well, at least it's near the front of the store in my store um, where they have all of their holiday stuff. This is where you can find a lot of this type of thing. You're going to need that and you're also going to need some of this great stuff spray insulation now this came from lowe's okay but you can find this kind of thing at walmart pretty much any home improvement store what it is is a spray insulation um if you've remodeled houses you know what i'm talking about i've used this stuff many many times in home repair but when you have a crack in wood blocks anywhere you need a little bit of extra insulation you spray this in and it expands okay now they have this kind which is a regular kind and then they do have some and i forgot the exact terminology they, like big gap like for big gaps and it foams up like really really big this is just your standard gap and crack great stuff if you'll look in the description box i will have some of this in my amazon shop where you know if you if you don't want to go to the store to get it or if you're unsure of what to get you know you can just check that link and you can order some there but first there's a few little tips that i want to tell you about this but let's go ahead and start filling these up and then we'll come back and talk about it okay so the first part of this craft is to go ahead and get your liners put into your pan however many you want to make you know what let's go for it let's see if i have enough to make all these <laughs> all right so we have that there so now what you're going to do is you really really want to shake this up i shake it for at least a good 45 seconds to a minute before you begin to use it so let me do that and i'll be right back okay yeah that wind outside is kicking i swear so this has been shaking for about a minute now so you just take the lid off and then here is your nozzle you want to screw the nozzle on there now this stuff here, um, in my experience, if you fill the liners up about three quarters of the way, you're going to be fine. Don't fill them up all the way because then this stuff is going to poof up and it's going to overflow and it's, it's going to make a mess, okay? So you want to go about three quarters of the way. I'll scoot this over. Oh, did you hear that noise? Now this stuff is very sticky. Try not to get it on your hands. I'm trying to angle this. This is much easier to do when I'm not on camera gently squeeze the trigger okay now just work yourself in a circle that should be good enough now once this stuff sets up it is very easy to trim down with like an exacto knife or just a regular old serrated knife try to press that down a little bit there so if it gets too full or if you have a lump in it and you're not 100 percent happy with it don't worry you can trim it down and then cover it with the frosting and nobody will know that works in real life too <laughs> <laughs> when you're making real cupcakes. Honey, frosting can cover a multitude of sins. There we go. And this stuff is kind of hard to control, so it's not going to be 100% perfect. There we go. 
So now I'm going to work on the rest of these. And we will talk a little bit about this stuff while this is setting. All right. Now I'm going to mess with this here in a little bit just to kind of smooth it down a little bit. I'll use a popsicle stick for that. But a lot of people have asked me, because I was doing all these on my blog quite a while before I even got onto YouTube, can you reuse the stuff in this can? Because I haven't used maybe a quarter of this can. And yes, yes. If you look at the nozzle here, and I've noticed this on other brands too, not just this one. But do you see that little, that little knob right there? If you just take something, I'm just using a scrap piece of felt. Just clean off the nozzle. And then you want to bend this back. And just snap it down on top of that. See that little nub right there? Just snap the nozzle down on top of that, okay? Because the way this stuff works is how does it cure? Well, it cures by sucking up the moisture from the air. And if moisture cannot get to it, then it won't set up. It won't get hard and it won't cure, okay? So you take the nozzle and just stick it down there and it'll be fine. Just set it on the shelf. Keep it, <laughs> you don't want it to be knocked over because this can is pressurized. But um, that's how it cures from the moisture in the air. Now, when you get ready to use it again, if there happens to be a little bit here at the end of the nozzle that has clogged it up, just take a pair of scissors and trim that off. You know, unfasten the nozzle and you're good to go. Now I have gotten just a little bit on my hands and this stuff, like I said, I cannot express to you how sticky this stuff is. And it does not clean up very well with water. See, watch. See, it very, very, very sticky. It does not clean up well with water. Y'all know I hate wearing gloves. So if you don't want to wear gloves, just try to wipe off the best you can. A lot of times that'll do it. And you can clean up with acetone. Water doesn't really help you here. Water doesn't really clean it up and get rid of that sticky residue. So you can take nail polish remover or just plain acetone, put it on a cotton pad, wipe your hands with it, wipe your table. If you get on your table, you know, use that to wipe your table. And that's how you take that off. But anyway, this stuff needs to sit for about eight hours. And I'm going to see if I can get a popsicle stick here because I was going to show you all how I'm going to... I'm going to kind of smear it around like so, and then you can just kind of get it into place. Now, if you don't want to do that, you know, just wait until it really, really puffs up, because these are going to get a lot bigger. Wait till it puffs up, and then just trim down the excess in the middle, like I said, with an X-Acto knife. So, I know they look bad right now, but just give it a little bit of time, and don't be worried about messing this up. You're not going to mess it up. I've had some people say, well, what if I mess it up? What if I put too much? What if it isn't smooth? It's not going to be, so you can already see it starting to set up there. It's not going to be perfectly smooth just because it's the nature of this stuff. But you could just do like I'm doing. Smear it around with your popsicle stick or, you know, a little silicone spatula so it won't stick to it, whatever you have available. And then that's that. But I'm going to let these sit, like I said, for about eight hours. And then we're going to come back and put on some frosting and decorate them. Okay, so as you can see, I have painted some of the cupcakes back here. Now, the paint that I'm using is this light mocha acrylic paint just to make it look more like a baked good. I mean, you don't have to paint it if you don't want to. But I just wanted to try to give it, you know, some sort of contrast I guess you could say between the cupcake and the frosting because for the frosting I'm going to leave it white because I'm going to be using some red glittery hearts and some red glitter and, and all that so I'm using that light mocha and this is sort of like a flat paintbrush here you just go around and if you can very carefully just kind of tap it like underneath the edge of your cupcake wrapper there and just kind of bring it up towards the top. You don't have to paint the entire thing because we're going to cover it with frosting. <laughs> so don't waste your paint if you don't have to. Okay. See, I'm going to take some scissors and cut that part off. Because we don't need that. Just a little bit more paint. And this doesn't take very long to dry at all. I mean, this stuff kind of sucks up the paint. So y'all can hear my cat, my neurotic cat in the background. If she can't see me, she freaks out. <laughs> she's wanting to come in here. And I don't let animals in my craft room, so she's not happy with me. All right. 
So I'm just gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna let it dry. And then we're gonna whip up some frosting. All right, now we're gonna make some frosting. And this is the same lightweight spackle that I used in another video. You have to use the lightweight spackle. So many people I see are making their cupcakes and things with regular spackle and it falls flat because it's too heavy. The lightweight kind will hold its shape a lot better. So this is just a regular piping bag from Wilton and you're gonna need a star tip. So this star tip, this is one of my favorite sizes for this. It is the 1M. You can get the bags and the piping tips at Walmart. That's where these came from. And then you just cut the end off of the bag like so, see over here? And then just put the tip in there and then just squish it down towards the end, like so. So now you're gonna use a plastic spoon that you lost. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and then we're just going to scoop this stuff into the bag. Now for this, I'm not gonna put any coloring in it because I, I want this frosting to be white, okay? You can either use it exactly like it is because it's already white. If you want it to be even brighter white, you can add in just a little bit of white acrylic paint and stir it up. You know, like how I made with the sugar cookies? Did you see that video where I made the sugar cookies and I colored that frosting pink? You can do the same thing, just add a little bit of white acrylic paint. But for this, I don't want it to have any color because I have these red glittery hearts that I'm gonna put on top. And then I'm gonna put some red glitter. So let's squish this on down to the bottom of the bag. And now you're gonna frost your cupcakes just like you would regular cupcakes. Pretend like this is buttercream. It works pretty much the same way. So now you're just gonna take your little foam cupcake here and you're just going to pipe on your frosting around and then come in and touch that first row that you did. Come on around. Bring it around town. You know, SpongeBob. <laughs> Just like so. Sit that down. And now I have like these little glitter hearts. You know what? Let's put some glitter on first. Let's put on some of this red glitter. I had to open the container of glitter. It wasn't even open. So now I'm just going to, let's hold it like this. I'm just going to sprinkle some of this glitter on. Like so. Stay. If you want to weight these down, you can put like um, a handful of, you know, like those little river rocks that Dollar Tree carries. You can use that if you want to. And now let's see where I want to put this heart. Let's stick that right there. There you go. And now when all of this dries and has set up, I'll just take like a little paintbrush and knock off some of the glitter here and here. But there's your cupcake. How cute is that? Can you can y'all see that? So, so cute. But I have a whole pan full of these things that I need to decorate. And then I'll take a good photo for y'all and you can see it at the end of the video. Now, you, you're gonna wanna seal these, okay? You're gonna wanna seal these. So what you can use is a clear spray paint. You can get that at Walmart. You can get that at home supply stores. Um, Krylon, Rust-Oleum, they all have good clear spray paints. <sighs> because this has glitter, I may would use a gloss. Some of the fake foods, you wanna use the matte because you wanna to tone it down to make it look more realistic. But with all of this glitter here, if you spray a matte sealant on it, you're gonna dull all that down. And you don't wanna do that. You wanna use the glossy kind to keep this looking all nice and sparkly. But anyway, really, really simple. So like I said, stick around till after the video and I'll take a good picture and y'all can see what it all looks like, you know, set up, trying to look realistic. But anyway, if you would, give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below, and I hope to see y'all next time. Bye!